Hi guys, Fraser from Lifco Hydraulics. We have a troubleshooting video on a piston pump, this time a Rexroth. This one, the customer complaint is they keep stripping the shaft. This is the input shaft. So this would connect to a diesel engine uh, with a some sort of coupling device. Now in this case, you got a tandem unit. You hear a lot of a P1, P2. It's very confusing because there's also a Parker pump series called the P1 series. What they're referring to on this one is they mean the first pump. So it's the one that's directly connected to the diesel engine. P2 would be the one behind it. And the P3 would be the gear pump that's on the back. So this unit is a triple tandem. Their complaint was that the torque settings are too high on this, meaning that the pump is drawing too much torque. So let's take a look. Is that the cause of failure here? So the customer's complaint is, this is the third time that they tore up the front splines on the drive shaft. This is the P1 unit, so those splines should come out over there. They think that it's running either too high in pressure or something's not running properly. So they sent it in for us to do an inspection on it and set it to the proper setting. We've taken the front apart already, so I'm just gonna take this gear pump off the back of the variable displacement pump. So why is Lloyd just sitting there? Because Dave is one of our newer staff members. Dave is a certified Rex Roth technician. He probably still has a lot to teach Lloyd. Uh, also too is it just sort of keep an eye on things so that uh, it's done the way that we like to do it. Remember, we're always learning no matter how many years of experience. So basically teamwork. But this tubing is connected between the housing and the port plate. So I'll take this tubing off first. Okay, next thing I'll do is I'll take the uh, horsepower control or off of the pump housing because there's a pin behind here that's kind of locking the swash plate inside the pump to this control valve. Since we're this far here, might as well take the other control valve off at the same time. We have a hard time getting underneath the uh, port plate here because we have a through drive flange. So we have a cut down 14 millimeter Allen key to get in that tight spot. It's the only way you can really get it is with modifying the tools, cut them down a little bit shorter. So I'll get this bolt out first. Yep. Remove the port plate. Yeah, that's the internals. This is the stroking piston here, or control piston. Different companies call it different things, but it all means pretty much the same thing. I was just gonna mention that because we always refer to this as port end cover. Okay. You call it port plate. I call it a port plate, yeah. Different it terminal. Does the same thing. Tomato, just, tomato yeah, kind yeah. of thing, yeah. This is the counter piston. We'll take a closer look and probably polish that up to see if that's reusable or not. Pull the pistons out and the retaining plate and retaining bowl. And then the swash plate. And we'll get the rest of the oil out of the pump case now. After we pull the dry shaft out. Got our cradle shells, or bearing liners, the last two pieces to come out. So there's your side by side what what it was to what it turned into. And there we go, we have everything out. Now we're ready to start taking a closer look at all the parts and see what we can reuse and what we, what needs replacing. Where's the shim rail? And yeah, I was looking for that too and I didn't see it. What he's looking for is one of these. It's a mechanical stop to limit the displacement on it. Could it be missing? Yeah. The P1 has been repaired at least one time before. This one, it could have been resealed or something when the first one got repaired. And it might have just got missed. Yeah, it definitely says 60 cc's though. So without the stroke limiter, it would be 71 cc's and it's showing 60 cubic centimeters. By rights, it should have a shim. So we'll have to probably make one. That'll be for the customer to confirm. I don't know where the thing would have went. That would affect the horsepower too, or the torque if it's got an extra 
10 cc. Yeah, because they've got too much displacement for their horsepower yeah, setting, possibly, I right? Too much flow. I don't know if 10 cc and the P2 would be enough to cause the P1 shaft to strip out. I just think something set way out. Yeah. So that's a great discussion there. What they're saying is, is that if you did not have a max volume, would it draw more torque from this diesel or electric motor? In theory, no. It still would follow a curve, and all this max volume does would be the same as like a Pmax or pressure compensation. It would just stop the curve at one point here. In practice, it could draw more power if you let it go too far, meaning this curve is no longer this nice clean curve. It could get a little weird at the end there. I don't think it's the cause of this problem. It's not nearly enough for it to matter, and that's what Lloyd is saying. But it would draw a little bit more horsepower in practice. I don't think it's enough to ever be concerned about, but it is interesting to know. So what we'll do now is like this, there's some critical areas here we'll take a look at. So on the, what I call lens plate, port plate, it doesn't feel too bad. I can feel some light scoring on there and some normal wear, but we have a lap machine in the shop. We'll take this off. We'll put the lap machine for a few minutes. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. I'm not, I'm looking at, this is another critical uh, surface here on the barrel that actually matches up with this surface on the lens plate and I'm not seeing any scoring or anything, but again, we'll take this over to our lap machine, we'll lap this up. Again, with this, we're lapping it just to see if most of that wear comes out in the lens plate and I'm expecting it will be. And the barrel was in pretty good shape to begin with. We'll have a good idea if these parts are reasonable or not after we do a quick lap. So I clean these parts up after they were on the uh, lap machine for a very short time. And we can see that all of the wear and the very light scoring is totally gone. Uh, the machine does an incredible job. The front pump was in really bad shape. Lloyd showed earlier that the splines were worn right down, almost to nothing. And this one was connected through the through drive to the front pump. So we'll take a really close look at the splines on both sides. You can see some little bit of just light, light wear on one side of the splines. They're in good shape. Then we'll take a look at the shaft seal area. That looks like it's pretty good shape. There's a little bit of buildup of some dirt on there. We'll want to polish that off first just so we can have a really close look at it to make sure there's no scoring. The other thing we'll take a look at is the barrel splines here. And there's some minor wear there, but I'm not getting any to pick up with my thumbnail at all. And the through drive splines, they look like they're in good shape as well. With the pistons, feel the back of the piston here. Make sure there's no edges. Feel a little tiny bit there. We'll take a closer look at that. Actually take a look at this as well and see if there's anywhere in the backside here. That feels nice and rounded in there. So this piston actually rides in here. So if you get the high case pressure, you would have this piston shoe mm -hmm. pressing down against this retaining plate. Yep. And that's where you get that wear. So although I can feel a little bit of wear there, it doesn't feel too bad. Considering this is in pretty good shape as well, the retaining plate, I can't feel any end play there. So those, those pistons are in good shape. Now the swash plate, this is a critical surface here because this is where the piston shoes ride against. I use my fingernails quite a bit. You can pick up any scoring. Again, you can see that it looks like this might be scored, but it's nothing major at all. So this surface I'm gonna say is in really good shape. We can reuse this. We've taken everything else apart to take a look at all the other components. Now we're down to just the valves. So we just want to take a look inside the valves at the valve spools, just to make sure that there's no scoring on the valve spools themselves. There's nothing usually typically really happens to these, but we wanna make sure that we have the two springs, that the two springs are intact, they're not broken, and there's no wear to the coils where it could be wearing against the side or anything, these are in good shape. We'll repair the pump with this control valve to be confirmed upon testing. This is the uh, last pump of the triple pump combination is the gear pump. Very simple pump compared to the actual variable displacement pump. Well, I've already cracked the uh, bolts loose, so I'll just go ahead and open this up. Okay, so we can see the uh, seals on the side of the pump, like I said and they look like they're all intact so that's good a little bit of scoring here doesn't look too bad take the drive gear out looks like it's in pretty good shape 
We're not seeing a lot of wear down in between the gear teeth here, which is good. And also the shaft seal area on the drive shaft looks pretty good. And take a look at this. We can see again, lift that up. And our seals are intact, so that's good. And on our suction side or the inlet side, we can see a little bit of wear and scoring here. Oh, the one thing I'm seeing here is uh, we have a little bit of a chunk missing out of this uh, plate. Yeah, we can see some damage there for sure. Let me take a look down inside here. There is quite a bit of wear. Yeah, that's just break in mostly. The chunks missing is what I'd be more concerned about. Depending on what they're using it for, if they're using it to drive something in a supplementary circuit, it's probably going to bypass. But if they're just using it as a filter or for a cooler, it should be fine. Okay, yeah. Okay, so that pretty much concludes this. So really the only really heavy damage we saw was exactly what the customers said. They're chewing the splines right off the drive shaft. That drive shaft, that can't be reused whatsoever because the teeth on the, on the coupling engage with the teeth on the spline of the shaft, which is connected to the motor. So right now that's just gonna spin. So yeah, that has to be replaced with new. So yeah, like Lloyd said, we'll write this up. It gives the option of the customer to replace the housing and the plates or not, and give them the option on that for the repair. We set pump one to 50 horsepower, and we can see the constant horsepower to the right-hand side in the graph here, and the constant horse horsepower for pump two, which is the rear pump, that was set a little bit lower at 45 horsepower. So, yeah, we've rebuilt these pumps, and they both passed. Yeah. The horsepower control is working well. Compensators are set to 3,000 PSI and our remote compensators, the minimum pressure is set to 20 bar or both 300 PSI. So these pumps have both passed the test. Everything looks good. One of the questions that I had when I first responded to this customer, it was that engagement of the coupler. Was that enough engagement? Interesting enough, we see here a comparison of the two shafts side by side. We can note the amount of engagement on here. If the two matches, then yes, they had the right amount of engagement on the external, on the P1 or the input shaft as well. So the level of engagement, the amount of engagement, the surface area of splines that are covered appears to be satisfactory. So I don't think that that is the issue. This appears to be more of a mechanical problem. I'd be most concerned of the mechanical linkage between the shaft, this input shaft on this pump, and then the way it connects to the diesel engine. It could be the coupler and the amount of cycles that it's going through. Each time it's kind of jogging the shaft a little bit and wearing down. The alignment needs to be correct. There needs to be some grease. And also, if one of the components is worn, it can make the other side worn out as well. This one was killing me. I don't really get involved too much in the material science or the engineering. I try to just stick with hydraulics because there's so much to learn there and not a lot of people know it. This one here, I wanted to do a little bit more research. What we see on this with this shaft is clearly a sign of fretting. So there's these uh, asperities, material surface asperities. I didn't know about the term before either, but it's these microscopic ridges that are on the material. When they rub up against each other on another material, they start to wear each other out. And that will, over time, uh, reduce your shaft to that nub that you saw there. That was a lot of research. I went down a rabbit hole just for you guys and, well, and for me too, so that I, I know that stuff. I'm gonna make a post about that because I think there's some interesting uh, terms that are in there that are maybe a little bit uh, complicated. We just got these bi hydraulic shirts in. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Send us an email, sales at with your address and size, and we're gonna give a few out.